right. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's weird. Before I actually started setting up the video, I had, I was like, my mind was like full of stuff to talk about. Um, then I went and poured my coffee and then, um, did a couple of other things. And obviously uh, my mind jumped several tracks because our, and then I slapped on some music and it was just not, um, shaping my brain the way I wanted it to. So I'm just listening to some tropical birds chirping away in the background. Crickets and all that crazy nonsense. Just uh, something mellow. Um, I will say, oh, maybe this will get me going. Uh, I will say one thing though that I'm really darn happy with is that um, while I've been playing this game and starting to think about what to do with the grand campaign and everything, like how to integrate it into my game. And I was yesterday even, oh my God, you should have saw how nice um, the weather was um, in Ottawa here in the afternoon. It was spectacular. And the way my front yard is, or front porch thing of a jig is, um, I've got like a little tiny wall and um, it uh, blocks the north wind, which is where the wind was coming from. Because one of my neighbors walked by later and was, when I was writing notes and stuff like this, and he was like, oh, you're doing some homework? And I was like, well, just writing. And um, about this, obviously. And um, uh, he was, and I was like, oh, what a beautiful day. And he's like, well, not if you're standing right in the wind. And I, of course, didn't notice it. Uh, God, it was, I mean, I actually, I, I'm pretty, I, I'm not sure. I may have actually snored a little bit because I'm sure it was one of those dozy off bits where it's like, I'm into the, that strange pseudo dreamland uh, time. Uh, I, uh, anyways, we won't go down that road. Um, so yeah, oh, oh yeah, what I want to say is this. I'm really enjoying watching movies while playing this game. I'm start, I, I'm, and there's tons available. So I just finished watching and I broke practically every rule last night. I think it was part of me. It was like, ah, you're on six days off. That, nonsense it goes through my head so let's go overboard in super indulgence and I decided to watch the tail end uh, so I watched like nearly 40 minutes I actually sat down and watched nearly 40 minutes of a freaking movie man uh, like continuously um, uh, I watched the tail end of journey's end what ironically but um, and I watched it during peak electricity rates and I left my windows open so I could barely see the bloody movie because there was so much freaking sunlight coming through. That was kind of stupid. But I wanted to get it done and um, I'm glad I did because I just had finished watching Aces High and I'm going to be honest with you and I'm not dissing Journey's End. It's, it's a good movie and it's got some massive heavyweight actors in it um, and it is intense as I think I mentioned in uh, when I was replying to Charles's, what, Charles's comments. Um, well, like what I was up to kind of thing. It's intense and uh, I'm going to have to check up on it. It's kind of got a, uh, like a based on a play vibe, if that makes any sense. It's that type of um, interaction with the characters. If, and there's, a, there's not a lot of, uh, I don't know, that's the way I feel. Um, it's a good movie. I'm not saying it's a great movie or whatever. Um, there are scenes I'm going to watch again. Uh, the reason why I'm loving the fact that, like I said, that uh, I'm watching it while playing or watching, uh, you know, watching World War One movies and not just doc, you know, the documentary stuff and all that other whatever. It's, it's um, there's so many visceral moments, especially with the trench stuff. Uh, I got to see parts, uh, you know, enacted that I've read about or whatever. I'm not saying it's accurate or that they're doing or whatever, but um it was just neat to see, or there was things that were happening that I didn't understand what was happening, or it, it's starting to put a lot of things into context. Uh, you know, when they're starting, like it's like, oh my God, the the Germans are only like the guy said, sixty yards away from us, or just the, uh, I don't know. It, it's nice. On a second note, um, with the oh, I'll bring it over. Hold on. This book, holy, oh, this, this is what I'm going to be using, guys, for. Um, so this book, you're not going to see it because I'm using the overhead camera thing, but I'll try to... Oh my God, you can. I can't believe it. But uh, so this book is going to be my primary source for researching um, um, 
trenches, which I really, I mean, let's be honest, got to get into it. It keeps running around. I, I had that big trench mistake over here, uh, right up along, uh, north of the Prego River, which has been causing the Germans grief. But the nice thing is, it's kind of offsetting a lot of mistakes I've made with the Russians. So you know what I mean? Like everybody's balancing it. I don't know. Oh, whatever. It makes sense for me. Um, okay, this is why I'm going to say I'm using this. Like it's kind of killing, uh, you know, um, two stones with a bird or whatever the hell it is. Um, because listen to this. So I get my gaming jollies out of, you know, looking at the Trench Warfare book. And listen to what he says in the intro. I was like, okay. Done. I have gathered information about trench warfare from many sources. I went, okay, done. Processing the most important details and, and can now consolidate most of that in this one book. I am a perfectionist when it comes to representing details correctly, which means that I try to refine and improve my work wherever possible. Any mistakes in my models bother me terribly, but perfectionism is a blessing and a curse. So, yeah, it's this guy here, Andy uh, Belzey. Uh, like I said, I picked it up at the um, World War I Museum in uh, Ottawa. Um, it was 40 bucks, and you can see here it's only 30 bucks American. I don't know if you can see the, I gotta look over. There you go. Uh, shoot, sorry about the glare and all that crazy nonsense, but you get the idea. And um, I brought it to work yesterday to, to show people, and, um, uh, I mean, some, you know, didn't really care, whatever, tough. You, you get what you get with me. Um, and uh, uh, Claude meant, looked at it and said, holy smokes, this guy's making a lot of his clothing out of aluminum foil and so on and so forth. I was like, oh my, well, I, I said to Claude, actually, you probably looked at this freaking um, book longer than I have because I just, I just don't have time. So I just flipped through it quick. And I was like, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to start using you as um, my trench research. Why not? Like I said, it's going to be fun. And it kind of gets me away. I'm not saying historical books are dry. Good God. Some are, of course. It's like all books. But um, it's nice to get off that strictly historical, like that's my only aim is to, you know, in the book is to, you know, give you information or some, you know, context about this battle or whatever, or like, you know, the scope of the war or a certain theme or whatever. Whereas this guy's like, yes, obviously we'll be, it's exactly what I'm doing with my freaking gaming for God's sakes. So I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, and now, okay, here's the third thing. Uh, uh, kind of related to my miniatures, which I'll be doing a live stream about later. Um, and that's whatever. Um, holy smokes, man. Is gaming ever a freaking awesome way? Like I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, I know that. But my goodness, this is such a freaking, I mean, think about this ever since you were, even when you're a little kid, what did people say to you? Go play. And what the hell am I doing? And uh, all I've done now is uh, bumped it up a bit for in sophistication levels and I'm still playing. And it's now like integrated with history and it, you know, like I said, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm, you guys are doing the same stuff. Um, Holy yeah, that is amazing. You know, and you hear again, uh, Math on the Games or, uh, other, you know, other um, educators and so on and so forth. I want to bring gaming into uh, the classroom and so on and so forth. Um, or uh, the website, uh, Junior General. That's what it was aimed for, for crying out loud. Anyways, I'm just saying it's amazing. Um, and here we are. Okay, I'll try to talk a little tiddly bit about this. Um, because I'm, it's getting up and close to starting to integrate um, into, like I have to start weaving that stuff, like I said, uh, some of the grand campaign stuff, but I'm gonna do it incrementally, like I said, and this is how I think I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be the first focus will be the Serbian front. I'm um, right now, like I said, I've been trying to read up on the Battle of Kolobara for two reasons. One, for the live stream on Saturdays, and for this to figure out what the situation was in Serbia come December. Uh, I'm going to leave all the other fronts alone. In other words, um, I'm not going to send reinforce. I'm not going to sway reinforcements or any of those stuff. Um, I'm going to leave them alone for a while. Like I said, I'm going to go nice and slow. Uh, the only extra rule stuff I'm going to look into is how to convert um, resource centers and uh, the uh, 
food agricultural areas into those um, uh, certain points which I can then reallocate into either troops or um, supply I think uh, so that's one th that's the first thing I want to start getting towards that's going to be I guess I'm the first big rule um, thing so I'm going to be reading up on the Battle of Colabara and finding out what the situation was like which is not good for Austria-Hungary Austria not good at all coming into as far as I know of course then there's the typhoid uh, epidemic aha that should be um, uh, added in historic uh, into my game as well. So that means during there's a certain time, I don't know when it is, January 1915, there's a flippant typhoid epidemic going on in Serbia. They closed the borders. Um, so that's going to have to be taken into account. Is that going to be a time when maybe the Allies can figure out, uh, or sorry, the Allies, I got the Entente have to figure out a way of uh, maybe uh, opening up a second route um, to get su supplies. That's why I wanted to yip yap about uh, to Charles about uh, because he's the leader of Italy and see if we can figure out some sweet deal um, on paper uh, for him to allow um, us to um, get supplies to uh, the partisans. Uh, oh, wow, I can't, can't show it on here. Um, you know, uh, through Albania to, uh, to get to, um, to Serbia uh, because the Albanian king's toast, it, well, he's, it, you know, um, fled the country and it's a, it's a free zone there um, because I also found out when I've been reading up on the Battle of Colabara right now that um, the Greeks have, have actually been sent uh, not the Greeks they uh, the, it's a rail line from Sal Salonica to wherever I don't know um, but there are supplies that the Entente are historically have been sending through that way so I found that interesting I don't need I need to learn up about that um, so those are the those things I'm trying so it's going to get to the point in December what is the situation here is it going to be um, and this is how uh, I'm also going to justify it about not connecting it with um, like sending for like adjusting what's going on with the Western Front and so on forth so forth because man I can only digest so much I'm gonna look at it this way Falkenhayn member was never truly convinced about um, uh, okay, the Eastern Front is the way to go. He constantly was like a, the French. It's going to be one in the West. Um, also, we got to remember, man, come, uh, come spring, this is, I'm yet again, got to start integrating this stuff, is the, uh, the Entente are starting to think about things like the, the Second Battle of Ypres uh, coming up in, well, in April of 1915. And then also we've got the... Uh, Germans and the Austro-Hungarians starting to slowly going with Falkenhayn because Conrad's going, look, man, you got to do something for us, man. We're in deep, uh, deep trouble. Um, that's when they start uh, getting into the Gorlitz, uh, uh, trying to uh, break through, you know, setting that stuff up for me. Um, that's going to be affected potentially if the Russians are in a horrible position come here, come December. Maybe um, the Gorlitz kind of um, breakthrough is not going to happen because Conrad is going to get his wish in a sense of but then I have to start figuring out quite, probably that was a lot of troops that were sent from the Western Front over to help them out so I may go you know what those troops will still stay holy if I kind of have to do some research then I'm going to have to start reading up on okay which armies were actually well it shouldn't be that hard because I mean it would only be Germans going that way so I obviously be the Austro-Hungarians coming from there. Um, so you know what I mean? Conrad, in my world as well, has been sent over into uh, looking more towards the Serbian front because uh, Brevich is now dealing with all this, which is perfect for what Conrad wanted to do anyways. He didn't want to deal with all that stuff. He wanted to go over here. Um, so maybe now, like I said, it's still a early days, um, but it would be nice to see if the situation gets to the point where um, I start looking at the reinforcements that should be coming this way in the in the spring of 1915. I'm like, well, actually, there there's not going to be um, or as many. Uh, this is an area, like I said, I want to close up the rail lines here. But this is an area. Remember, this is still in keeping with Brevich's dictum, um, reclaiming lost territory. But um, you know, this is an area I wish. But it's uh, like I said, that's not in keeping with Brevich's dictum. So I will not be doing it. I wish. Um, this is a, um, I really need to take this hex, I think, spot, but it's, uh, it's over with now. I have to, you know, 
that's just something to think about. These are two spots I would love to nail eventually uh, as the central powers, but not my turn yet. Uh, I will say another thing. I know it's uh, bang on and on about it, and you guys can't see it from here because it's uh, way up. Uh, you know, uh, you can't get in. I'll bring it later. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do it then because you can't see. Um, you know, I wanted to go into like how quick and easy it is for me to just look around. And I understand that some people don't like the look of it, but like I said, it's for me. Um, uh, you know, if, okay, put it this way, I wouldn't be using these counters if there was no stacking. If uh, the game was, uh, you know, in set up in such a way that I was able to, I don't know actually still, because the amount of information I'm able to get is just insane. And like I said, if I need to get more um, specific information, I just go to my book, which would, to me, is equivalent to a stack. It just means I don't have to sit here and remove counters and, oh shoot, they get, they get knocked over and so on and so forth. I don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Let's go down here. I'll just gra random, let's just gra grab a random one. Uh, let's go with this guy here. So I know this guy, you, you can't really see all the specifics. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do two, one German and then, um, no, actually I'll do an Austro-Hungarian non-specific over there because I, I, he's an interesting little dude. Uh, but this one, eh, it's not so much because it's not, I, you know. Anyway, so I know this is um, a Russian, a Russian counter because of the Russian flag. Uh, it's ID number 41. Um, there's an engineering unit there because of the that little Alberto marker. I know there's at least one core HQ there and uh, it's under the command of the second army and that's all I know. Um, I know for a fact though that there's no engineers or cavalry because there should be Alberta markers there. That's pretty cool. Uh, then we'll, oh yeah, so we'll do a German one. Uh, let's go with this guy here. So this guy here I know is a German counter because of the German flag. And remember I can move these Alberto markers all over here. Whatever the hell I want. If there's two, there's one over there. Holy after he's maxed out beyond belief. It's like what the hell? I'm like I was trying to figure out. It's like no, we're not going down stack line. Uh, I think it was number twenty one I was grabbing. So I know he's um, under the command of the Warsh Army. Um, uh, there's entrenchment going on over here, and it's going to take seven more turns. And there's three strength points sitting there. Um, that's all. Uh, and there's obviously no cavalry. There's no core HQ. There's no army HQ. Uh, there's no engineers, there's no artillery, nothing. That's it. Just, uh, just infantry. I'll go over this little dude over here. Uh, so I know he's an Aus uh, Austro-Hungarian unit, uh, ID number four. He's under the command of the Third Army. And I also know there's some German troops there because of that little uh, cross thing. Um, so, and why is he there? Because uh, German troops uh, in bolster the uh, retreat. Uh, benefit or whatever it, you know it goes from one third to one half and then I've got two strength points sitting there so if it's only two strength points I can guarantee well there's, it's impossible it can be any other way so I know for a fact that there's only uh, two separate units if I went to the book which I will do why not um, so there's going to be two brigades or for sure sitting there one will be a um, uh, going to be a German one uh, dollars to donuts is a Langware brigade and the other one's either going to be a stripped down one of my little uh, divisional breakdown dudes all the way down to a regiment or he'll be a um, um, di uh, diminished um, uh, brigade or division. Let's take a look. Uh, Austria-Hungary, and what, what number did I say you were? Number four. All right. So, where are you? Or, hold on. And I've got the uh, 34th Landwehr Brigade and the 35th Infantry Division sitting there. So there you go. Um, I don't know what else to say, really. Seems to work for me. Um, yeah, I can't really uh, pop it up on here to show you. Um, so that's that. I hope that uh, kind of makes sense. Oh, uh, was there anything else I wanted to show? No, that was about it, I think. Hopefully you guys are having a good time. Oh, I don't, nope, oh, hold on. Yeah, oh my God, 20 minutes. Yeah, I think I should shush. Okay, see you later, bye.